refining capacity remains diminished from where it was just years ago. That's due to COVID and things like refinery fires and hurricanes. It's going to be very challenging winter with prices for heating oil and natural gas much much higher, maybe two to three times higher, to, uh, more expensive to heat your home this winter. And that's not good news. Are people going to be huddling around garbage can fires this winter? Are little old ladies going to just leave the oven open? That's a recipe for disaster. Joining me now, energy expert and Power the Future Executive Director, Daniel Turner is back. Welcome back, Daniel. Hi, thanks for having me. We're powering nothing. No, and we have a really dark winter to look forward to, unfortunately. And look, your last segment, you and Scotty were talking about the government, the Fed tinkering with interest rates. Well, now we have the government tinkering with energy policy, and we've got a lot of people making decisions in our oil and gas and refinery and pipeline, et cetera, who have no experience of this. And, and we are all suffering the consequence of, of their ideological vision clashing with the reality that our economy is powered by fossil fuels. And, and until those people lose their power, we're going to continue this downward spiral. No, they hate fossil fuels, but unfortunately for a vast majority of people, they heat their homes with heating oil and electricity, especially in the Northeast, where they're already rationing heating oil. Yeah, especially New England that has to get prepared about this. Uh, and, and it's funny, you know, there's so many races happening in New England, gubernatorial Senate races. I'd love to ask any of the candidates, have anyone talked about this? Has anyone mentioned, are we prepared to get through the winter because our, our uh, uh, propane levels are low, our natural gas levels are low, our coal levels are low, and coal is at a four-time high? Um, so these are the issues. Look, energy policy isn't always sexy. I get it, right? I mean, most people fall asleep when we talk energy. But in the consequence, it powers and fuels and grows and transports and manufactures everything in society. And if energy policy is tinkered with by a bunch of, of asinine people, and that's who we have running it, we all suffer the result. And so this is what you have to bring to the ballot box in, in two weeks. Is my grandmother in Boston going to suffer? Yes. Uh, my uncle up in Maine told me he had to pay, it was $1,600 more to fill up his natural gas tank this year. That's a lot of money, and those are the questions we should be voting on. I'm glad you brought up Maine because Maine actually has an older population than some of its neighboring states. And, you know, you've got a lot of people on fixed incomes who can't afford an extra $900 for the entire winter and they're going to pay even more than that in some parts and you know it's like we, we talk about climate change and Bjorn Lomborg has pointed out many times like human beings are actually sort of evolved to do well in warmer weather we don't do well in the cold no one likes being cold except me in the no. studio and, and you know four times as many people die of the cold than die of the heat and and the people in this administration and people running for office if they're indifferent to inflation, to interest rates like your last segment. If they're indifferent to these issues, it's because they're unaffected by it. And that's a luxury, right? That's a privilege. If you can afford to pay a few more dollars a gallon in gas, kudos for you. But a lot of Americans can't. Mm -hmm. So the green agenda hurts the middle class and the working class more than anyone else. Absolutely. And it's people like Stephen Colbert like, well, I can afford to fill up my gas tank. So, you know, let's jack up those prices. It's the only thing that'll get people to change. Uh, killing them and torturing them, really not a very humane solution, but unfortunately that's what we're looking at. Hopefully uh, we will get some rationalists in power who will, in your words, Daniel, power the future. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Mm.